welcome to Fandom 101, where we take a look at what fandom is, what its aspects are, and what issues exist today in the fan community. I am recording this episode remotely because, like everything else, the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted modern fandom. Many anime, sci-fi, and other fan conventions have been cancelled since March, and it is doubtful that they will be able to resume soon. However, some fans have filled the gap with on online conventions, held over digital platforms like Zoom, that let fans meet up, cosplay, and discuss their favorite shows just like a real convention. Today, our guests are organizers of one such digital convention. Brianna Leonardo and Ariel Hergith are the convention co-chairs of WebCon, a virtual convention that was held at the end of May. Brianna and Ariel, welcome. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thank Hello, you. it's nice to meet with you both. I especially like your Princess Leia costume, Brianna. Thank you. Got to represent the also, phantoms. Also, your background is very appropriate. <laughs> uh, so to start off, um, firstly, what is WebCon and how would you describe it? Like you mentioned earlier, WebCon is an online convention. Um, so how we like to describe WebCon is that it's put together by a bunch of really passionate fans. We're all volunteers and we really want to highlight different artists and vendors and panelists because they're definitely hurting during this time with all the con cancellations, which is why we have our spotlights where we interview uh, different artists. And so WebCon is a very um, large and company convention so we have all fandoms present we have like anime panels comic panels um all that type of stuff we have dj parties we have meetups games do you have anything else to add ariel uh yeah so as brianna said it's a convention but online uh who would have known um but i also kind of think it became kind of like a experiment in testing new forms of expressing ideas and uh, art. Um, it also allows for like a lot of different people who wouldn't normally get to like express their ideas on things to have a platform to put out those thoughts. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, what gave you the idea to create this convention? Um, I really wanted to create WebCon um, after seeing that cons were canceled across the country, which is the first time that's happened in decades, especially since convention culture is so popular right now. Um, and then there was a lot of potential to run a virtual convention because it allows anyone to be able to be volunteers or panelists or um, take run their own virtual convention, which is why it's very common now to see some almost like every weekend at this point. Um, and since it's like online too, like you can connect with people across the country that you normally wouldn't sometimes when you go to your local convention. So that's what kind of made me want to run our um, own virtual convention. I was actually originally thinking of trying to host an online event um, sometime around when uh, my favorite convention was canceled, um, Anime Next, because I'd been planning a very intricate cosplay uh, and I was gonna like sew it for the first time and everything um, originally I was just gonna make it like a group of friends and we would just like give our own small panels and talk to each other but uh one day when I was just like scrolling through Facebook I saw one of Brianna's posts talking about like interest in an online event and so I reached out to that because uh, getting help on things is a lot better <laughs> than just <laughs> running something by yourself yeah. Um, so I thought it was a really good idea, and I definitely wanted to help out with it. All right. Um, how did you plan what to put on the schedule? Um, so it, I feel like the schedule kind of made itself, not like I was looking for certain things for the schedule. Um, so what I did was just make Facebook posts and all of the groups I'm in because there's so many different fandoms and cosplay communities um, and just made a general post and just saw who was interested and just worked with what people wanted to offer and just give them that creative freedom to tell us like if you had a choice of doing anything in convention like what would you do and that's what kind of made the schedule. Yeah, so um, I kind of put a lot of the schedule together along with Brianna and one of our volunteers, Tasha. Uh, and something that I thought was cool about it was we kind of like were just 
pretty much accepting everything. Like, we, we looked at what they were about, but um, we pretty much, like, wanted to make sure it was a positive experience for everyone. And um, one thing we uh, didn't realize was that it would actually fill up a lot. We thought there wasn't mm -hmm. going to be as much interest at first, but people really wanted to be involved. Um, and basically, because of that, it opened up pretty much to any interest. We got, like, I, I can't even think of kind of a area we didn't cover. That's it. <laughs> okay. Sounds like you covered pretty much everything. Um, since the convention was held on three different platforms, Zoom, Twitch, and Discord, what technical challenges were there to getting it all to run smoothly? Um, so with anything you do online, like there's always technical challenges, even if you make a backup plan to your backup plan to your backup plan. Um, so originally, um, we had Zoom and we used the breakout room function to like mimic different panel rooms, like how you would have a convention like panel room one does this, two, mm -hmm. three, so we could fit more panels because of how many we've had. Um, realizing while doing that execution, maybe not the best idea because some technical difficulties were that um, as hosts, we had to put people in the certain rooms, they couldn't put it themselves. And so that sometimes placed people in the wrong rooms or they were mm. confused about what room they wanted to go to, or it might be disruptive to the panel because they wanted to, they act, it's like walking through a panel to cut through another one, yeah. which can be a little awkward. Um, and sometimes with streaming, there was like video lag, um, you know, making sure you have the good internet to use. Um, and then there was confusion sometimes where panels were being held because they were on different platforms because mm -hmm. we wanted to encompass as much as possible because some people are way more comfortable on Discord. Some people don't like Discord and only want Zoom. But then that also made it a little confusing um, how to hop around and go to the different panels. But um, I just wanted to give a shout out to Jessica Pang because she mm -hmm. was our like streaming and media guru and she's the one that knew how to use like OBS and everything and set that all up for us because we were all very new and we were literally learning as we were putting mm -hmm. WebCon together, which is very difficult when you're trying to build on your knowledge while planning for a convention. Yeah, very steep learning curve. <laughs> um, what has the response been to this convention? Um, I feel like it's been pretty positive, I think, because um, we continued past our convention date. We started having weekly sessions. Um, it's not like a full out convention every weekend, but we have like at least some activities for people to look forward to. And I think we were able to build a community in that aspect because a lot of times like when you go to a virtual convention, you only attend it once and then that's it. And it's not like uh, a following like on in real life convention where um, you know it's going to happen again next year. So virtuals are a little bit of a gray area. So I think because we constantly keep having content, um, we were able to create like our own little like webhead family as we call it. Mm. Do you have anything to add, Ariel? Uh, yeah. Um, for response, I think it's been pretty like overwhelmingly positive. People keep looking for areas to, um, kind of just interact with people. I feel like people are just missing that sort of like friendship and camaraderie with others. So I feel like especially putting it in an area where you can, um, it's kind of scary sometimes I feel like for people to just talk to new people, but I always felt like conventions kind of bridge that gap a little bit. Like everyone's here for the same thing. It's like you've already bridged like getting past like, who people um, are on a surface level. So you can really start to make those connections with others. Uh, I also feel like we, um, because we incorporated a lot of ideas and we keep um, incorporating a lot of the feedback people give us, uh, it's actually been um, kind of inspiring a few other conventions to use hmm. some of those ideas. So I thought it was pretty cool to see, like we went to, um, a smaller server convention the other day and they used one of our ideas for like a giveaway for um, encouraging people to attend panels. So I thought that was cool. Nice. Uh, what con other conventions has WebCon inspired? Um, let's see, YukiCon. There's actually like a server 
on Discord where it's a bunch of con heads and other conventions. And so they're always throwing off ideas. Um, and then I, I don't talk a lot on there because sometimes they talk about webcon, but in a positive way, but I feel uncomfortable. Like I just get okay. very awkward around that stuff. But I do hear that stuff. Like they're like, oh, I really like the way, like we've heard, I, I guess the best feedback I've been seeing online, the other conventions are trying to incorporate is like a, a really intensive artist alley and trying to advertise your artists as much as possible because those tend to get a little bit put on the back burner for virtual conventions. Um, like we made a Facebook group, Artist Alley as well. So even if you didn't have the Discord server, you just go on our Facebook page, you could still see the artists that we have um, and in the email blast and in the spotlights. So I'm, I'm really glad people are taking more notice and helping these creative people keep their livelihood basically. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of that server? Um, it's Artist Alley for Dummies, and then there's, like, various other ones, too, that I can't think off of the top of my head, because I just keep getting server invites. Okay. And I'm, like, at the point where I'm just, like, accept, 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 and I just, like, <laughs> I just, like don't know what to do, because I'm, like, oh, I, I guess I should go. Like, I'm that person that always joins everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, know Ar I know Ariel's probably the same way. Like, yeah, I sometimes no, see you. keep trying to make some invites, and I'm, like, there's so many. <laughs> funniest is when we see each other on the server like I literally like then text you I'm like oh you're here <laughs> <laughs> oh man sounds fun uh what do you think is the main difference between playing an online con and a real life one um, so with an online convention it's a little bit easier um, financially and legally so for example like when you run an in real one you need money to be able to like book a space um, a lot of finances are needed you need insurance to make sure everyone stays safe so there's a lot of um legality that's involved that we kind of get away with because we're virtual that we don't have to worry about yay, yay. <laughs> um, so that's pretty nice and then i think another big disadvantage too is like as like a cosplayer when you're in an in real life convention you walk around and you have to like be in real life showcases your work and it's easier to get photography done but in mm -hmm. a virtual convention unfortunately it's really hard like you only see me from up to here to here so which is why yeah. when i do cosplay stuff like i'm literally wearing pajama pants and you'll never know how much work i put on my bottoms or my crop <laughs> because you'll never see it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, i actually i used to uh, help run a couple of conventions, um, some library conventions, and um, a bigger one I used to do with my organization in Arizona. Uh, but something I did notice that I don't think a lot of people think of is response time. Um, just because like with email and everything, it's like when you're planning an in-person convention, yes, you're still emailing people and like waiting for those responses, but like the day of, it becomes very hectic realizing that when you're trying to ask people like, oh, is your panel set up correctly? Oh, you need help accessing this. Like you need uh, help because you can't even access the server. It's like, you've got to split your attention in like 80 different ways and also wait for those responses. And then people are waiting for your responses. Uh, I think it's like kind of something that I, didn't expect as much. All right. Uh, what lessons did you think, uh, did you learn from the first webcon that you think will help you improve the convention in the future? So this is a shout out for Ariel, even though she's in this video <laughs> chat, but like, um, because like she mentioned, she ran in real life conventions. Um, and she made me very aware that there's a lot when planning a convention that I didn't realize when I originally was like, yeah, let's do this, guys, and started gathering people. Like, even simple things like putting the schedule together, putting a manual, all the promotional materials, like, that takes a lot of energy. Um, just the planning meetings we've had, like, we've had to, like, Zoom people super late at night until, like, 3 a.m. Um, just to make things get done, especially since we tried to throw this entire convention basically 30 days or less. I don't know why this, there'll be a vlog series of how this yeah. happened. But basically, like, definitely putting in more time into planning for the future conventions, um, just because I kind of thought that virtual would make it, like, easier in a way, but still a lot of work. Uh, yeah, right. one thing um, I feel like I would take away from this, because, uh, like, you learn something from every event 
you run, but specifically for this online one, really learning your platform, I think, is very important because when we had originally decided to use Discord, I was like, oh, yeah, I know that sort of, like, my brother knows it more. And I had, like, my 14-year-old brother at the time, like, conscripted his child labor to help set up the server. (laughs) Um, But at the same time, like, at first I kind of relied on that rather than trying to learn it myself. So I think next time, like, and I mean, I've been doing it now, but, like, really learning what you can do with your with what resources you have. All right. Uh, Once the pandemic eases, would you consider holding the con in a physical location? Um, I would definitely consider it. It would definitely have to be like a smaller con, like not like a giant convention center or anything like that. Like there is a place I was thinking of in Boston, but I feel like I could potentially do it, but I would just definitely have to do like a lot of research and like make sure I talk to the right people. it's, I actually started, like, befriending real convention people, like, staff, mm-hmm. like, besides Ariel, but, like, just that, though, like, having, like, that network that I didn't have before kind of makes it a little bit more plausible in the future, but we'll definitely have to see, like, with cost and, like, everything, like, the real world problems, how feasible mm-hmm. that would be. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that to Brianna to figure <laughs> that out. Um, I always did things with other people's funds, and by that, I mean I would uh apply for funding and have them deal with all that uh it's it's hard um when i originally ran one of our conventions uh there was a huge issue we ran into where all of a sudden we um we didn't realize that we needed not only a security company but on site police officer mm. for the event And so we had to find, like, an extra $2,000 in the budget, like, pocket change. But, like, (laughs) no, not really. Uh, It was very stressful. So things like that, I feel like I don't ever want to deal with again. (laughs) So I'll I'll help run things, but (laughs) the the funding stuff, please leave me alone. (laughs) Okay. Uh, What other upcoming virtual cons would you recommend people check out? Um, I actually don't know any upcoming right now, like, uh, but I did just attend, like, YukiCon, um, YumeCon, uh, I went to Anime Lockdown. I kind of find out about things last minute, because my schedule is very variable. I, I work, like, crazy shifts at work, so then I'll f- suddenly see I'm free. I went to TrotCon as well, yeah. um, and went on those virtual platforms and they're all amazing. I don't have any right now that I'm planning for the future, but I will definitely like hover around those discord servers with Ariel. <laughs> okay. I was, I was just looking, Cause they have like the convention things that tell you what's coming up for the week. Yeah, definitely. And then we have our mini sessions coming up again. We have this month and then November um, it's from October to mid November. So that's something we're gonna have to look forward to planning wise. <laughs> okay. And what's coming up in the fall? Um, so basically we what happened was we did these mini sessions every week to like foster the community. And it's also easier for us because it's still planning, but not like a hardcore convention planning. It's easier on the lighter schedule each week. And so a lot of people really enjoyed them and they really liked having something to do every week and having something where they can continue meeting the same friends on our server. So we kind of want to do that again in October, November, but we also want to reach out to other conventions and see if they want to host anything on our server, especially since there's so many online communities and conventions. All right. Um, And last question is, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start an online con? Um, I would say to make sure that you have a good support team to uh, start. I've heard of horror stories of where only one individual was running an entire online convention and they had extreme burnout um, because it's not easy. It takes a lot of work. And also when you have a large team, everyone brings different talents to the table 
that you don't have as well. So speaking from our own like staff group that I also want to give shout outs to. Um, so we have like Steven Stoyer. He's also one of the con chairs and he brings like a bunch of humor and like memes to the table. Like he made all our anthems and he dropped an album for WebCon on Spotify <laughs> and brought all the TikToks. So he was able to reach people through that route. And then we had like Ant, um, Bohal, who does like videography professionally, he made all those really professional videos for us, and he's the one who started it, the spotlight idea as well. And then Jessica, like she's just like super creative, um, and she made like she's literally like a one woman media and promotional materials team, um, which I she has way more talent than I could do. Like if you had me make those flyers, they would look like they were made on paint. So that's why <laughs> you need a bunch, <laughs> you need a large team, and then. Um, we also have, like, Justin, and he's very ambitious. Like, he just reached out to, like, Doctor Who YouTubers and was like, hey, you want to come here? And he just, like, has – he just has so much professionalism and just reaches out to people. I'm like, I would feel so scared contacting those really important mm. people, but that's good you do that. <laughs> um, if I could just add to that, I think definitely utilizing the talents you have available to you um, – I know every time we had an issue, I, like, tried to think of, like, someone who actually knew how to do that. Uh, when we were creating the schedule, I talked about her before, but um, Tasha is one of my friends from college, and she just really, really loves organizing things. <laughs> like, that's all, like, she loves it. Um, but uh, something else I really think people should look at is, like, planning out um kind of like a tentative schedule for when you want things done because i know a lot of conventions kind of popped up originally within like the first week a lot of them i didn't plan out as much like what amounts of work needed to get into that and i feel like that also added to a lot of the burnout for uh some people um but I think definitely utilizing those talents because it'll make everything easier for you and make it easier on your timeline and you won't be up till 5 a.m. and then get back up at 6 to run your convention the next day. All right. Uh, that's all the time we have for today, but thank you for talking with me. Uh, Brianna and Ariel, uh, where can we find you online? Um, so we have a website, webconlive.com. Um, we also have Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok. It's all under uh, Webcon 2020. And then we also have Jessica Pang's website, which is jessicapang.com. If you ever uh, need her expertise on <laughs> media streaming and stuff, just because people have seen her work with Webcon and then she helped out with like the um, other events as well. Um, she's a freelancer and she loves doing that. So if you guys ever need some advice, make sure to check out her website. Yeah, um, I don't have anything super professional like that. I just have my Facebook, uh, my Tumblr. I won't share that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but um, uh, I, I will promote my brother's comic. Uh, please go read Project Freedom on Webtoons. That's, that's all the promotion I have. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for joining us to learn about fandom. I hope to see you next time to discuss the ins and outs of fan culture. And remember, never stop being passionate about the things you love. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.